Hello everyone, how are you today? It's Kay. So this is the 22nd of March 2022 and this is on Tuesday. So today I will be talking about the psychology and mindset topics and then I will give you analysis on the JPY pairs because they are trending and which one will be the best to trade. I will talk about that on this video. But um, at the same time, I'm so excited and very happy because uh, I got uh, a nice, amazing report from one of the GTS members. And uh, this is also related to today's topic about psychology. And so I will introduce, under his permission, I will introduce his uh, comments and what he did. And hope you can learn about that also from this video. So uh, let me switch the screen and start right away. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, as a quick disclaimer, as usual, uh, this content is all for educational purposes only. So when you take trades, please do with your risk management. And also, uh, this is uh, in a video session. But if you can please follow the guide guidelines and rules in the video and comment box below, that would be great. Because after all, we're all here to learn. And uh, finally, quick announcement is also there are many scammers out there in the world uh, using my name as in creating fake accounts and direct message or they're creating Telegram or Instagram, Facebook. So just be careful. Uh, I never send any DMs in the SNS. So in case you receive them, most likely they are fake. So just be careful. So uh, yeah, once again, I'm very excited. And the reason is because I received one of these uh, comments in the Discord, which I will show it right now. So well, here's a screenshot of that, uh, his comment. And he said, I did it. First of all, I want to say thank you. A uh, thank you to you all helping me along this way in the GTS. For all your uh, patience with my impatient. For all your technical help and not at least your emotional support, it meant a lot to me. Whenever I can help you with whatever I can, I'm here. Just let me know. Stay gold forever. So this is a very heartwarming comment. And he, what he did actually was he passed the FTML uh, until the end of March. And that was one of his biggest goal in his life, actually. Because, uh, you know, we were discussing many, many times on this topic ever since he joined the GTS this time. Uh, we spend uh, time to discuss and how he can improve not only his strategies but also emotion because uh, his emotion, his psychology was uh, a big challenge for him. So, uh, you know, when he started challenges first, he had some, you know, big drawdowns. Whenever he took trades with my strategy, he got drawdowns and uh, I can show you the graph also. Hold on, let me switch to Discord. And uh, so this is his uh, Discord account. And uh, he put all his single trades and analysis and also uh, the reasons why he took this trace and the reasons why he, he exited. He put all these comments with the screenshots like this. But uh, one thing I want to show under his permission is that uh, the graph. So this is, I think, his FTMO account challenge. And uh, he actually passed it. Uh, so, but first, you know, first couple of trades uh, until maybe 11, uh, you know, he, he did very bad actually, you know, he did very, you know, negative and the uh, drawdowns were there. So, um, I can imagine how, how big it was for him in terms of the mental and emotion. He was, uh, you know, very struggled with the emotion, but, uh, you know, he stayed calm and he stayed uh, to uh, to maintain the discipline uh, with uh, you know with my strategy, so after that he actually almost got some break-even trades, and then he took uh, he took one of the big trade, one of the big profits he took from the market, and that actually recovered almost you know uh, to to break even uh, for these previous losses, and after that he yeah, keep he he kept applying my strategy. And with his own discipline, he did, and he had some break, break even, some some profits and some loss. But after that, he got so much profit uh, for the last uh, one week or two weeks, and then he passed the FTMO challenge. 
And I'm very happy to see this result because, um, you know, he was... Uh, I don't want to tell much about him because it's kind of personal, but uh, what I can tell is, you know, he has been struggling a lot. He has been into many, of course, courses, and he has studied a lot. In, he has lots of knowledge about indicators, about, you know, different strategies, and uh, he was applying and applying, but he was kept losing, losing, and then uh, he, you know, came to my GTS, Global Trading School. And uh, so when I first, you know, we discussed uh, his impression, his impression was he's a very gentle and he's a very, uh, he's a good thinker. He likes to think a lot and he likes to go deeper and deeper on one thing. Just like, just like myself, you know, whenever I look at something new, whenever I go some new place, I want to take time and look into deeper level. Um, so I think uh, I found something similar in that sense with him. But uh, his challenge was that, you know, he has to, he's, you know, he wanted to be successful in trading and that uh, he put so much effort and discipline, especially, and emotion, how to reset, how to reset emotion, how to maintain the, you know, stable psychology and emotion along the GTS, the GTS class. So, uh, you know, sometimes whenever I saw his face, sometimes I, I can tell that he was a bit, uh, you know, struggling. He's a bit, uh, you know, uh, worried about his result, especially when he first saw this drawdown. But uh, he stick to the rule, he stick to the rule, and along the way, he must have learned many things about the psychology and risk management, importance of risk management, and also uh, he kept Discipline is the most important part. And so here is his spreadsheet. He took all, you know, the records here, which I recommend to everybody to do. You better record all your trades on the spreadsheet. Uh, and his graph was like this. So, um, so initially, he had some drawdown. But after that, he had some nice end wave bullish. So if in this case, starting from here, he started to have nice end wave bullish. So if he keeps trading in this manner, his graph should be drawn like this way. You know, uh, every month or uh, you know, every year, uh, he can expect this kind of graph. So this is an ideal graph to draw for everybody. If, especially if you want to compound your profits, you should draw the bullish end wave in the graph. Is what I tell to Adidas members. But uh, yeah, I'm very happy to see this result. And when I think about this result, I thought that this is a right timing to talk about this topic. And I would like to introduce my one of my tweets. And especially this is, you know, I, this is something that I practice also. And this is what I also the GTS member practice also in place. So my tweet was like this. So I tweeted like a... Avoid 3M in trading. And 3M means uh, these are first letter on these three words in Japanese. The so first word I would like to introduce is Muri. So you better avoid Muri psychology. And what Muri means uh, is uh, overburden or overdue or over trading in Japanese. If, if it's in a trading world, that will be over trading in Japanese. And sometimes uh, when we say something impossible, we say muri too. Like it's muri, like it's impossible. Like muri means impossible too. But over trading is one of the things you have to avoid. And I'm not talking about numbers only. Like 20 trades, 30 trades per day will be over trading. But emotionally, you want to, you want to avoid the over trading. And what that means is that let's say you take a buy and the market retrace backwards and you exit with a loss or break even or even a small loss or a stop loss, you exit anyways. And after that, the market starts to go up again. And then you might take a trade again in only 5 minutes or 10 minutes interval. And if you keep doing it, the market reverses backwards again, you exit. And then the market slightly goes up, looks like it slightly broke the previous high and then you re-enter again. So if you keep doing this, then uh, you know that will be no success because that will be 
an attitude or habit of overtrading mindset. And that is because it's basically a revenge trade. So never revenge trade. Make sure when you lose, then you have to give yourself some time, at least 30 minutes to one hour, and reset your mindset, reset your emotion, and come back to chart is what I recommend. And what that I what's what I will be doing actually, uh, you know, when I lose. So avoid the moody over trade is one of the things. And the other one I would like to talk about is muda. And muda in Japanese means it's waste. So avoid muda trading, avoid waste trading. So what that means is never waste time and money on whatever you do, especially in trading. Never waste and time, waste time and money on whatever you do in analysis or trades or stop loss also, or uh, even take profit. Uh, you don't want to waste time. So uh, this is about the time efficiency. Uh, so we have to avoid the waste in time and waste in money in that sense. So time efficiency is the one of the biggest. Uh, uh, mindset, biggest important mindset uh, for my trading career uh, because uh, possibly you have to take less time in screening chart, less time in making decisions to buy or sell and then after that you simply buy or sell, you execute and you put the stop loss and then you move it to break even at the right timing and other, afterwards you just leave chart. So make sure you don't take too much time on screening charts and never take too much money in positions is what I mean by avoid the muda mindset. And then the last one is mura. Mura. Mura means uneven. So let's say when we paint something, when we paint and uh, paint a picture and when you, let's say, put the blue paint on, on the canvas, then uh, if it's uneven, like some parts a bit white, white, and white, and some parts a bit darker, and uh, that's like mura in Japanese, uneven color, uneven like uh, you know status. So avoid mura thinking is also what I really care about when I whenever I trade. So I say never think unevenly. Be consistent on your thinking process and trading habits. So this is also very important because uh, you know sometimes you when when you think about the markets and let's say you focus on the price action and while you're focusing on price actions you may see some gold cross or debt cross or you may start to look into other indicators or apply indicator and look at it and you never thought about the candlestick or price actions anymore so you have to focus one thing at a time, and that is very important. You have to uh, avoid the Mura mindset and even thinking patterns. So once you fix, let's say uh, you decide to use this strategy, then you better keep using that. You never look at other strategies. You never um, you look at other indicators. You just stick to one thing at a time and avoid the Mura thinking pattern because uh, if you keep looking for the holy grail, then there is no answer to it. Uh, I think you have already experienced that. At least for me, that was the case because uh, I say all this because I was the one who was, you know, buying so many paid indicators, paid EAs, paid robots, paid strategies, and I tested all, all, you know, lots and lots of strategies, paid uh, strategies in the past when I was still losing, and. Uh, but I kept losing, and that's basically that. That that is because uh, not indicators were wrong or not the strategy was wrong. But that was because myself was not able to stick to one strategy until I see a decent result and until I see, let's say, hundred trades in my stats. And that's why I kept changing and changing. Let's say when I take a buy, exit, take a buy, exit. If I if it does if it didn't work like three times. Then I used to change the strategy again and start over again. And so I spent so much time and money on this. And I think that was a Mura mindset. I was so rushing into success in trading, become a profitable trader. 
and I was, you know, so focused on the winning strategy. And uh, my, but my fault, my mistake was once again I didn't stick to one strategy. So uh, be consistent on your thinking process and trading habits is very very important. So once again, Murray overburden, over trading is also uh, you know uh, not a good habit. And also Mura wasting time and money in trading is also something to avoid. And then Mura uneven thinking, right? Unstable thinking is also something like to avoid. But uh, today's topic is you know uh, coming back to the GTS members topic. Uh, he has actually uh, you know uh, he has fixed his mindset in terms of you know these three mindset. Then I think he made a success. Because uh, you know, in in the when he was having some drawdowns, he could have changed his strategy, or he he could have changed his mindset. Like I say, you know, always every day screen charts from daily to four. But uh, whenever he started to draw down, he might have started to look at the five minute chart or one hour chart, and take a re aggressive trace. You know, not not focusing on the higher time frames but he might have been uh you know looking at the lower time frames and take trades or besides what i teach he might have been using some other indicators or some other strategies and apply but uh he made success eventually uh, with this curve because um he stick to the rule he stick to my teaching and that was his mindset and that was a successful result so uh, until you see success, you can't really, you know, in a sense, believe uh, that it works. And I think that's the reality. But uh, until you see, until you see the result, if you can keep stick to it, and if you can keep practicing along the way, then you will see success. Is also true. And the reason why I say all this is because I was the one also. Uh, myself, I was switching the you know uh, the strategies. Even Ichimoku too. I use Ichimoku now, but uh, before I was using some other Ichimoku strategies. I was changing the parameter of Ichimoku. I was shifting Kumochi Kospan of Ichimoku, and uh, I was looking for what would be the best Ichimoku setting. What would be the best Ichimoku strategy that works for me to make profits. But all these were actually wrong. I mean, uh, after I started to my the original Ichimoku strategies, and after I have back tested it at least 100 trades, or 200 trades, or even 500 trades, if I practice and practice and see patterns, which one works, which one doesn't work, what kind of patterns it works, what kind of patterns it doesn't work, I start to realize. Uh, myself all, all these you know uh, formations and also the ichimoku strategies behind and uh, actually that made me successful and i can be stably success and afterwards so uh but it's painful i can tell it's painful until you see the success but uh you can be successful until you can be successful uh like let's say you can be successful until you practice, you know, uh, if you can practice until you success, then you can be successful is, I think, uh, my mindset. So, yeah, if you're using Ichimoku or any strategies, uh, please stick to it at least 100 trades, 100 future trades or 100 backtesting and see if it works. If it doesn't work, then uh, you can either change the strategy or you can ask the creator of that strategy and what was wrong with that strategy what did i wrong with this strategy and then you can get device and fine tune and uh, you can test another hundred trays and then see the result and this is only this is only way to get success in trading is my feeling that's why i went to share this uh this uh result but uh yeah but once again, I'm very happy to see this result overall, and uh, I'm sure he will be success in the long term. I think that will that made him so much, so much confident 
on what he did. And uh, so he says he's going to take a leave this week because he passed the test. And although the markets are trending right now, he can leave. I advise him to leave charts this week, take a good rest, reset the emotion. Maybe he might be too exciting and he might be overconfident. So in that case, he better leave charts and come back next week and start trading again with the same strategy, same mindset, with discipline. So that was um, the thing I wanted to share with everybody and also about the mindset, uh, important mindset that I value the most. So now um, let me briefly talk about the markets right now. I've seen that the JPY pairs are trending. So um, let me screen charts. So I was looking at these uh, JPY pairs and I found USDJPY and pound, uh, sorry, USDJPY and AUDJPY and Swiss franc JPY are very good today. Because, so first, let me talk about the USDJPY. So USDJPY is very good because uh, if you look at the daily Kumo, this is not too thin. For example, if you look at the CADJPY, the Kumo is very thin, like a thread. So it can retrace backwards anytime. But not only that, when it retraces, it can go backwards very fast if Kumo is very thin like this. And that's why whenever I see the thin Kumo like this, I stay away. But uh, if you look at the USDJPY, Kumo is much thicker than the, uh, the CADJPY. So even if the market retraces backwards, um, that might most likely be slow and the market may continuously be bullish. So in that sense, USDJPY is a good one. Um, EURJPY is bullish, but this is at the previous resistance. And Kumo is just twisted newborn baby Kumo. So it may be rest backwards. So I would st skip this one. And then uh, Pound JPY is uh, you know, also the same as uh, CAD JPY. Kumo is too thin. It just twisted bullish. And this is like a newborn baby Kumo. So although it's bullish, it broke the resistance, it may reverse backwards very quickly. So in this case, I avoid this one. So USDJPY looks better. And also uh, AUDJPY. AUDJPY also looks very good because the most stably, nicely bullish. This is not too thin. So this one is also nice. And then once again, CADJPY, Kumo is too thin. So once it retraces, it can very go very fast. So I avoid this one. And then finally, Swiss franc JPY. Swiss franc JPY, Kumo is also a bit too thin. So in this case, uh, I think I will avoid this one too. Before, the Kumo was looking better. But now, after a couple of hours, uh, this Kumo looks very thin now. So I think I will avoid this one too. So among these JPY pairs, uh, in my view, USDJPY and uh, AUDJPY are looking good to trade. So uh, yeah, I hope uh, you can capture some nice tips. Looks like AUD is strong and CAD is strong and JPY has been weak still continuously. So uh, I hope you can catch some nice tips and also uh, keep discipline on your mindset in your trades every day. So again, thank you for watching until the end. If you liked it, please press the like button and I will see you in the next one. So